Hello filmmakers, it's Carrie with Filmmaker Central and I got something cool to show you today. Now in the past I've shown you Gyroflow which is a open source or free I guess free piece of software that will stabilize certain types of footage. Now I say certain types because the footage has to have gyroscopic data in it. So that's going to be GoPros, the DJI Action 2, the DJI Avada, um, some Sony cameras, uh, the Blackmagic cameras, um, Insta360 cameras, some of those that have built-in uh, gyroscopic data, those can be stabilized. You can get a full list of all the cameras that are supported at gyroflow.xyz. And I've shown you Gyroflow before, and it's what I use all the time. If I'm doing Action 2 footage or Avada footage on my Trail Traveler channel, it is a very, very safe bet that it's been run through Gyroflow. However, for some reason, <laughs> oh, I was on Discord today and I clicked on the Gyroflow server and there were messages about the OFX plugin. I wasn't aware of this. So I went to gyroflow.com. I'm going to do that. Gyroflow.com or gyroflow.xyz slash download. As I scroll down, here is a DaVinci Resolve OpenFX plugin. Now, if I look at the change log, this was last updated um, well, last month. So it's, it's been out for a little while. If I scroll down here, October, July, I mean, so some things have been around for a while that I, I had no idea about. Now, why is this cool? Well, it's cool because now I can take advantage of the Gyroflow features directly within DaVinci Resolve. That means I don't have to pre-process those that footage for stabilization. I can do it right in DaVinci Resolve. Now again, why is this a big deal? Because I don't have to do the entire piece of footage. I can clip it. I can put it all in the timeline. It still has the original time stamps on it. So I can easily figure out where in the timeline it goes compared to other footage. That's been a pain in the ass because when you process it with Gyroflow, those stabilized files are going to have the timestamp of right now, right when I do it, not the original. So this is a big deal. I can lay out my whole timeline using unstabilized footage and then go through and stabilize those clips. Yes, very, very, very cool. So we're gonna take a look at how this works. So I have a piece of footage here and you can see <laughs> it's got some some waviness to it. It's not super stable. Okay, so what do we do? Under our open effects, scroll down to the bottom to warp and we'll see gyro flow. I'm just gonna drag this onto that clip. Now, with that clip selected, I'm gonna go to the inspector. If that's not open, click the inspector tab and go to effects. So now I have my gyro flow settings here. Now, all I wanna do is go load for current file. So I'm gonna click on that and wait. It doesn't really tell you that it's doing anything or that it's finished. You'll know it's finished because the project file has been filled out. And in my case, the footage is shot at 60 frames per second. My timeline is at 30. Okay, 29.97. Let's rounding. <laughs> we'll do some rounding here, right? So. Now it's telling me that it's basically stabilized. Well, let's take a look. Nice and smooth. None of that jerky waviness to it anymore. And I've done it right within Resolve. I didn't have to leave it and I only had to stabilize that one clip. All right, so how does this compare? Okay, let's uh, go here. And I've got a little comparison. Now, maybe not the best comparison here. It 
kind of hard to see when they're uh, side by side like that. I know because I know the footage. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at another piece here. So we can see the left and right roll bouncing back and forth. We see some jerkiness to the footage. It's just, it's okay, but it, it's just, to me, that's not great footage. Okay, we've got it stabilized here and it's beautifully smooth. Now again, I can come over to the right-hand side to adjust the parameters. I can adjust the smoothness. I can turn on horizon lock. I can do different things to fine tune it. But this is giving me the type of footage that I've wanted to see. Okay, let's take a little bit more of an extreme example. Look how shaky this footage is. And then we apply gyro flow to it. And let's see what we get. Really nice, super smooth. I'm very impressed with this. I'm so glad I can do this directly within Resolve and I don't have to do anything else. Super, super stoked. So here's some footage, an action two sitting on the bumper. It has a, you know, a little bit of waviness to it and it looks like an action cam sitting on the bumper of the Jeep, um, which is exactly what it was. So again, let's grab gyro flow. We'll drop it on there. We'll go to the effects tab. We'll say load for current file. Well, boom. Okay. It's done. And now it just looks super smooth. Now you want to see what it's doing. We'll come down here and we'll say stabilization overview. And we can see how much stabilization it's actually doing. And that's really, really cool. I love that feature to be able to say, well, did it actually do anything? Well, yeah, it did. It made this way more usable for footage. So what have we got? Well, we have all the power of GyroFlow in DaVinci Resolve. We don't have to pre-process anything. We don't have to use long clips and then cut them up and resolve. We don't have to try and figure out the timestamps of the original files. We can do all of our editing and then stabilize just the clips that we need. Because sometimes the Action 2 footage doesn't need to be stabilized. Sometimes the Avada footage doesn't need to be stabilized. But I can pick and choose. I can choose the amount. And it's going to be much faster doing it this way than doing all that in pre-production before I even start editing. Now I can just start editing and do the stabilization as I need. So if you are familiar with GyroFlow, or if you weren't, hope this gave you a little insight into GyroFlow. And if you have been using it and you didn't know about this DaVinci Resolve plugin, well, now you know. And the more you know, well, as the saying goes, Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this has been uh, useful for you. Um, this is going to be a huge advantage to my personal workflow on our Trail Traveler channel. Really looking forward to using this on the next project and just whipping through and not having to deal with stuff um, in pre-production. Saves me a ton of time. In general, how much time is it going to save me on a typical project? Well, we go out, we shoot a trail, we've got hours of footage. And when it comes to Action 2 and Avada footage, there may be, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes of it. Well, that's about another half hour or so of time. So if I'm saving a half hour on every video that I do, that's really going to add up over time. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.